Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the May 8th Rapid City Planning Commission meeting. Um, have a few housekeeping items to run, uh, if you will. If any, if any member of the audience wishes to speak to an item on the agenda, we request that you fill out a speaker uh, form to the left of the dais. Please fill out the request and the agenda number that you wish to speak to, and we'll take those in the order in which they're received when that agenda item uh, comes up. So, uh, and if you have a cell phone or anything else that buzz, beeps, twirls, uh, please turn it to silent or vibrate, and if you need to take a call, we invite you to take it out in the hallway instead of sharing it with the meeting. We appreciate that very much. <coughs> Items one through five have been placed on the consent calendar and may be approved as a group. Action will be taken on all consent items in accordance with the staff's recommendation by a single vote. Any item may be removed from the consent calendar by any planning commissioner, staff member, or audience member for separate consideration at this time. Findings of the Planning Commission are recommendations to the City Council. The City Council will make the final decision with the exception of Item 5, 14 UR 010 on the agenda today. The Rapid City Planning Commission action on this item is final unless any party appeals that decision to the Rapid City Council. All appeals must be submitted in writing to the Community Planning and Development Services Department by the close of business on the seventh full calendar day following this meeting. So, are there any items on the consent calendar that anyone would like pulled from the audience? I'd like number three pulled. Commission? Chair, look for a uh, motion on items one through five, with the exception of three. Motion by Tim. Second. Second by Linda. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Fine. Item number three. I'd just like to take a minute on item number three and recognize that today uh, we will sign the final uh, approval from the council, from the work of the planning and development uh, department and the community that's participated in a almost two year long project to chart a, uh, create a plan that will chart the course for development, uh, much of what goes on at this meeting and council meetings that need to approve um, the areas uh, in the comprehensive plan. It talks about how we live, quality of life, safety, transportation, uh, certainly planning and zoning is a piece that we were interested in at this commission. Uh, I think it's a fine piece of work and I commend uh, everyone that worked on it. And, um, I'm happy to move uh, myself for approval of item number three. Second. Any further comment or question on item three? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We have a comprehensive plan. Always good to have a plan. First item. Item number six is a conditional use permit to allow an on-sale liquor establishment in conjunction with a restaurant for the China Walk Restaurant uh, located at 1575 North Lacrosse Street. You may remember in 2012 that a, the same application came forward and it was denied by the Planning Commission be, due to three issues, fire sprinkler protection, landscaping, and uh, handicap accessible parking. I'd like to take you through some slides now. Uh, property zone general commercial district is located along North Lacrosse Street, which is an arterial and commercial corridor in the city. Uh, there's an existing uh, structure with commercial on the first level facing east, which is where the China Walk restaurant, the side of the building that the China Walk restaurant is located on, and some uh, lower level uh, suites on the west side of the building. Uh, this is basically the, the floor plan of the restaurant. Uh, and here we have uh, the site plan. Uh, before this came, before or the previous application, the uh, applicant was told that they'd need to fire sprinkler protect the building. At this time, the applicant has done that. In addition, <clears throat> the uh, submitted site plan showed that the landscaping was short on a number of points. 
and I'll show you that they have provided those uh, additional landscaping points and pictures to come, and that uh, <clears throat> there were two existing handicap accessible parking spaces on the lacrosse side of the building. However, uh, the ones to the rear of the building needed to be restriped, and that has also been done at this time. Uh, elevation showing the uh, front and rear of the building, uh, some of the signage that's existing. Uh, this is the restaurant that's requesting the on-sale use in conjunction with a f restaurant. Uh, looking north along across street, uh, directly across the street to the east and to the south. And some of the adjacent uh, the signage and adjacent commercial uses. Uh, this is the handicapped parking on the west side of the structure, which has recently been restriped. And here is some of the uh, landscaping, which has been... Uh, shrubs and trees which have been planted. <clears throat> uh, the staff's recommendation is that the uh, condition use permit to allow an on-sale liquor establishment in conjunction with the restaurant be approved with stipulations as noted in the staff report. I have a motion to approve and a second. Uh, any further comment? Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Number six is approved. Item seven. Item number seven is a final plan development to allow a 100 foot high cellular communications tower and equipment shed uh, located at 2520 Distribution Lane. Uh, <coughs> property Zone General Agriculture District, a uh, Cellular communications tower is a conditional use in the district. Uh, the reason this is a, in a final plan development is that the applicant is requesting two exceptions. The first is to reduce the uh, circulation aisle width from 26 feet to 24 feet. I'll show you that in just a second. And the second is to uh, reduce the side yard setback, minimum required side yard setback from 35 feet to 8 feet. Uh, this is an aerial showing that there is an existing dwelling and a detached garage located on the property. Uh, the area is designated on the future land use map as an industrial area. However, it's not currently uh, developed in that way. Distribution lane is mainly, it's a dirt road right now and uh, would need to be improved in the future should this area develop uh, as it is shown on the future land use map. Uh, working with the applicant, uh, we've secured a 45-foot front yard setback from the property line. Uh, and we've also included this as a stipulation because should uh, distribution lane need to be uh, improved in the future, uh, we'll need some right-of-way in order to get that uh, road in for that heavier traffic. Uh, this is the layout. You can see the, the equipment shed and the tower location. Uh, elevation showing what the tower will look like on the, on the side of the page. And the equipment shed. Uh, this is the uh, <clears throat> showing everything on the property. You'll notice that there's a drain, septic drain field located on the west side of the existing dwelling. Uh, for this reason, the applicant can't put the uh, proposed tower on the north side of the <clears throat> property because you can't really drive across a drain field and keep it in good repair. This is a picture showing the location of the proposed tower. Uh, isn't a lot of development in the area. Uh, the sign is posted on the property, and that is the existing dwelling and detached garage located on the property. Uh, this is looking to the west. You can see that distribution lane continues as a dirt road. Uh, there is an existing cellular communications tower just located to the southwest of this property. However, the applicant has indicated that they cannot co-locate on this tower without uh, structurally improving the tower and that it made more financial sense to put another tower up in this area. Uh, 
the fact that the area is shown as industrial in the future land use map makes this the uh, area where we desire to have these types of uses. Uh, this is directly to the south, uh, an existing commercial or industrial use. Uh, this is looking towards Dias Avenue to the east and north. And directly back to Dias Avenue, you can see it's a pretty rough dirt road. Uh, starting with the <clears throat> request for the exception to reduce the circulation aisle width from 26 feet to 24 feet, it should only be used by maintenance vehicles so that uh, width should be suitable for vehicles to park and get out as well. Uh, the side yard setback r request doesn't appear that it would have a negative effect and the fact that they're keeping the uh, 45 foot front yard setback should accommodate any future needs that the city would have as far as right away for uh, distribution lane. <clears throat> uh, staff recommends that the final plan development be approved with the stipulations as noted in the staff report. Motion by Tim, second by Andy. Um, could you show us once again, uh, I, uh, what is access to the tower uh, on the property going to be if it's not going over that drain field? Is the tower located behind the existing dwelling? This is distribution lane located on the, the south side of the property. Uh, the proposed lease area for the tower is uh, Got it. Okay. at the front so the otherwise they'd have to drive get across that drain field area and you mentioned that uh, should in uh, distribution lane need to be improved they would have to maintain the 45 foot setback uh, we're including that as a stipulation of approval uh, the minimum required setback is 35 feet however uh, because of the, of the request for the reduced side yard setback and <clears throat> I thought it would be probably best in order to do this. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? We have a motion to approve per staff recommendation. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <clears throat> Item seven is approved. Item number eight. Item number eight is a conditional use permit to allow a memorial statue to be located in the flood hazard district. Uh, city staff is honored to bring forward this request by the Rapid City Police Department for a memorial to uh, honor the officers Nick Armstrong and Ryan McCandless. Uh, the proposed memorial will be located in Founders Park. I'll start you through some slides. Property zone flood hazard district, a, <clears throat> a structure is a, a conditional use in the district. Uh, the aerial shows uh, that you can see that Rapid Creek runs through here. Uh, the location is approximately there where the uh, parking lot currently is located and Founders Park Plaza. Uh, the proposed memorial is called the Eagles and includes two soaring eagles and uh, two markers to honor the officers. Uh, layout of what, how the uh, memorial will be situated. Uh, here we have the existing parking lot for uh, Founders Park, uh, the restroom facility which has recently been uh, <clears throat> refurbished or built by the Parks Department, Founders Park Plaza, and this is the location of the proposed memorial uh, along the bike path and, and uh, in a highly used area so that a lot of people will get to enjoy it. Uh, the sign is posted on the property. Staff put the sign up and mailed the letters. Uh, City staff has worked very diligently to get this to you today. Uh, and we're very proud to, to get this moving forward. Uh, this is looking uh, at the areas across the street, across Omaha Street, uh, along west on Omaha Street to the east, uh, at the hills to the north and Rapid Creek. Uh, this is looking at the 
general area of where it's going to be located and then the exact spot where the proposed memorial will be. Uh, staff's recommendation is that the conditional use permit be approved with the stipulations as noted in the staff report. I'd now like to give the podium over to the Assistant Chief of Police, Carl Jeggeris. Good morning, Mr. Brewer and Commissioners. Um, I have uh, been working on this project for about the last couple of years to help facilitate it. Um, as you know, this incident was devastating for our department and our community, but none, nothing can compare to the devastation that the families experienced and continue to experience from that incident. Um, so in the days following the incident, there was an outpouring of support from the community and a lot of contributions were sent in um, to support the families. And the Armstrong family and the McCandless family in turn have taken those contributions and have through this process essentially worked to gift back um, those contributions to the community that provided them by presenting the Parks Department with this awesome memorial to honor the fallen officers um, um, in the future. So um, just want to introduce a couple people here with me. In the back there is Bill Armstrong. He's the gracious father of Nick Armstrong. And Jim Hansen, past president of the Fraternal Order of Police. Wayne Keefe, past treasurer of the Fraternal Order of Police. We had a small committee comprised of the, um, Jim and Wayne and Chief Allender and myself to have oversight of the project and the funds. And then artist James Van Nuys, um, he's been the lead on this project and he has also worked with another local artist, Dale Lampfear, to produce the sculpture and monument. Um, in the packet that I submitted, it gives an explanation for the location, the reason for the location. And as you can see, we've previously gone in front of the Park and Rec Advisory Committee, um, advising them of our intent early on before we started the contracting and everything that needed to take place. And I attached the notes from that committee and you can see there was unanimous support for the location and including comments from one commissioner of he cannot think of a better place in the entire Rapid City Park system for this memorial to be placed. So we're very thankful um, that we received the mayor's support to take this on as a city project and that many departments have worked diligently over the past year and a half, including Ms. Vicki Fisher, Fletcher LeCocq, um, the Parks and Recreation Department, the Public Works Department, and of course, our department and community planning and development services all had a hand in this. So we'll be available for any questions. Um, our intention is to have a ribbon cutting ceremony that will be publicly advertised and there'll be public invitations and you're all welcome and encouraged to attend on Friday, July 25th at 10 a.m. Welcome this morning, Carl. Uh, we're honored to have you in the chamber this morning. Um, it's a great project, good memorial for this city to recognize people in their service. Second. I have a motion to approve and a second. Is there any further discussion? Karen Bullman. Got to get the mic on first. <laughs> Thank you, Carl, and I know, I know this is a, a project that you folks have been working on for a long, long time, and it's a beautiful uh, memorial. I have to agree with that. I have some hesitancy about putting another item in the, in the park, and I understand part of this is in the floodway, and just could you give us some idea on how that's been addressed um, because of the flood and, and putting anything in that park gives me a little you know, thought, pause, and so I'd like to have some more information on that. Okay. Um, City Engineer Dale Tech did the survey and the floodplain survey to obtain the certificate to place it in the floodplain. Um, and so we do have the appropriate permits and approvals to do so. As you could see from the, from the uh, 
photo slide that Fletcher put up were really just um, probably 20 to 30 feet from the current restroom. We're a very short distance from the large concrete fish sculpture. Um, so those two structures being very close nearby. Um, so I would find that it, it is appropriate um, and other projects have received similar exceptions. So does anybody else have any response to that? Mr. Chair. Um, I have a light up for Dennis. Yes, in the uh, review process that has been going on, what is FEMA's position on a 100-year floodplain and having this many structures so close together? I got it, Carl. Mr. Chair, if I Please might. Please go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wonderful questions and the very same thing that all of us as city staff looked at, including the police department. There are provisions within the 100-year floodplain that if you obtain a floodplain development permit showing that the foundation and anchoring of the structure and the location and design of it would have a negligible impact in, in case of a flood, then those structures and only those structures can be allowed within that area. That is one of the reasons why this location was picked. And Dale Tech, with the, uh, our city engineer, um, has worked very hard with the Parks Department, as with those that are designing the, the monument itself, to determine um, not only the platform that it would be located on, but the foundation and its design and construction. Dale has, for the most part, completed that floodplain development permit. There are some finishing elements of that that will come up with the building permit itself. And so one of the stipulations of approval is that that floodplain development permit be completed before we actually issue the building permit. FEBA does recognize that in this 100-year floodplain and parks department, our parks within that uh, designation, that there has to be structures to serve as amenities to the public that you want to draw into those areas. So the criteria to acquire a floodplain development permit is in place and they are meeting that as a part of this. Karen, did you have another question to follow up? Yes, please, thank you. Um, thanks, Nick, and, or thanks, Carl, and thanks, Vicki, for, for the information. Um, was part of that in the floodway or just is just in the floodplain? None of it's in the floodway. No structures are allowed in the floodway. Well, I didn't think so, but I, I thought I read that. So I appreciate that. That helps me a lot. And um, I, I, I'm going to support this because I think it's a, a good thing to have. It's just that I, I had some pause in just adding one more item into the floodplain. So thank you. Any other comments, questions? Dennis? Um, in the plans, and I very much support it, and I think it's a fantastic design and should be accepted, but what's the possibility of getting more memorial-type structures located together instead of scattered throughout uh, our park and kind of encroaching on the floodway? Those would be decisions that we probably would have to bring to city council and it would be something for their discussion. Staff did not take this lightly in uh, reviewing whether or not there should be yet another structure. I think that um, just the relevancy of this monument representing the service that the police department brings to every citizen of Rapid City made this one so unique that we wanted to bring forward the conditional use permit and staff did that the families did not staff has done this we brought this forward we wanted to have something there that everyone could go and see in a very public place we used this location because there are restrooms there for those who may want to stop in and enjoy the park and view the monument it also has sufficient parking so the location itself was looked at very closely um, as Carl noted, one of the, um, the benefits of choosing this site is that the elevation of this area already does support some structural uh, improvements, and that's the, the reason why the city chose this for the, the restrooms. It will have the least amount of impact. As far as just putting more and more structures in the, the parks themselves, 
this is something that will always come before the Planning Commission. We can continue to have these discussions, and we, we do acknowledge that if there are to be memorials, if it's to represent a group or just citizens, more and more citizens, that maybe that be something that's more of a community uh, designation instead of an individual designation. We find this one very unique. And I will just add that through this experience, I um, did go through the Park and Rec Advisory Committee's process to obtain permission to put a memorial in the park system. In that process, they recently updated their criteria and guidelines. And, you know, typically, you know, uh, somebody who presents a request like that, it's on a smaller scale, it's a bench or a tree or other planting. But we did follow the same process and did receive the approval from that board to do so. Councilwoman Amanda Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Assistant Chief uh, Carl Jagger has just basically answered what I was going to chime in on. I know the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board recently adopted two uh, new um, guidelines and plans to their process. One of them does consider the benches and the memorials and, and those types of items. There is now a complete process that actually touches on upon all of the city departments in order to make sure they get clearance before they go through the Parks and Advisory Board. Another part of that segment, though, also separated out um, the classification of artwork. And uh, with Mr. James Van Nuys contributing as well as uh, Dale Lamphere, yeah. this piece actually crosses over into that artwork piece as well. And so it did go through all of the different pieces of that process in order to make sure that it was approved. Just wanted to give you that information. Thank you. I guess that's the <laughs> final bell. <laughs> Any further discussion? Uh, are we ready to vote? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much for coming today. Uh, I have no discussion items, no staff items. Um, so there's nothing. Well, I'm pleased to be back. Thank you to uh, Linda and those that carried on in my absence the last uh, several meetings and um, appreciate all the work. Chair, look for a motion to adjourn. We're out of here. <laughs>